Sam Gerrans from samgerrans.com. Today is Wednesday, August 16th, 2023, and today we're going to be looking at an article which discusses Russia turning to sleeper cells and unofficial agents. This is from our good friends at The, uh, at the Guardian, and uh, just by way of background, I haven't read it, I never read them twice, it's hard enough reading them once. The reason why I'm looking at it is to look at its propaganda quotient. Uh, full disclosure, I live in Russia. I have a view of uh, the, um, the Russia's unprovoked uh, war of aggression against Ukraine. But that's not really, I would say, motivating this, uh, this review. What I'm looking at is propaganda. Uh, and uh, in this part of my project. So it's more about just the propaganda quotient. And uh, I, I have talked about the Russian propaganda, and there's a very different sort of format for that. Um, but that's not what we're discussing here. So if you want to jump in and say, you know, Russian shill and blah, 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 knock yourself out, can care less. But what I'm looking at here is, is the propaganda uh, in this case. Right, uh, propaganda. If you know my broader work, I look a lot at the work of Jackie Lul and his book um, Propaganda, the Formation of Men's Attitudes. And he says that propaganda, I agree with him, that propaganda is a necessary corollary for what you're living in, which is a system governed by technique. And it doesn't matter where you live, Russia, uh, or the West, all these systems are, are governed by are motivated by, are subject to technique. And that would be my argument, that there is actually no substantial difference between any of these systems. And in essence, technique is not exactly technology, although technology is one manifestation of it. Uh, all societies, or rather any society which does not embrace technique, and by technique it's more like modernity, um, <clears throat> rationalization industrialization all of those things any any society which does not embrace this will be destroyed by those which do and those which do will be destroyed by technique itself okay so that's just by way of trying to sort of preempt uh, the the sort of russia shill chorus choir anyway we'll jump into it and have a quick look at it this is from our friends at the guardian uh, russia turning to sleeper cells and unofficial agents by Sean Walker. Moscow has turned to riskier methods of espionage after expulsion of spies it had placed under diplomatic cover in Europe. Now, just to say, I, I met Sean Walker once or twice in a previous job, and he is a uh, perfectly personable, but not outstanding in any memorable sense. But, and this was about 10, 12 years ago. No, maybe even more, about 2008, yeah, 15 years ago. And uh, anyway, so he reminded me somewhat of people like uh, Luke Harding, who's an, another, I'm not sure which paper he works for. But just to say that people like Luke Harding, more particularly, I'd, I'd, I'd put money on it. Uh, and I don't know about Sean Walker, I don't have any, any objective evidence. Um, but what is true is that journalists tend to be spies. They tend to be spies. That is their job, partially. And it, it's, it's standard cover for, for spies is to be a journalist. Diplomats, another one. So he's right here. What I'm trying to say is he's not exactly an objective um, person in this. I don't know whether Sean Walker is still in Moscow. Probably not. Um, so, you know, just to put it in context, he potentially as an asset of the alphabet uh, agencies will have been, I think, kicked out of, of Moscow. And so he's now discussing what the Russians are doing. I'm not saying the Russians aren't doing this. He, he could be completely correct in everything that he's saying. I'm not saying that he's, he's not correct. I'm just saying that you should consider the source, all right? That, that's all. To continue, an Argentinian couple living in Slovenia a Mexican-Greek photographer who ran a yarn shop in Athens, and now three Bulgarians arrested in Britain. Over the past year, police and security services across the globe, whatever that is, have accused numerous people living apparently innocuous lives with being Russian intelligent, intelligence agents or operatives. Now, I'm not here to discuss whether or not they are actually 
Russian intelligence operatives. But let's just look at the, the people that he's listed. Um, an Argentinian couple living in Slovenia. I don't know this couple, uh, but I have lived in foreign countries. And if you go and live in a foreign country, uh, let's say you're Argentinian, so your, your native language is going to be Spanish, and you go and live in Slovenia, which has rather, a, you know, you're going to be speaking a, 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 a non-Hispanic language in order to get by or possibly using English as a lingua franca. You're not likely to have an awful lot of uh, in-depth connections with that society. That's the point I'm making. Let's look at the next one. A Mexican Greek photographer who ran a yarn shop in Athens. Again, I don't know, but these aren't high placed people. These are, I would say, pretty nondescript. I mean, I don't mean to be rude to them, but they're not, they're not, you know, uh, working at the top echelons of business or the military industrial complex. They are low level, uh, unconnected people. What was the other one? And now three Bulgarians arrested in Britain. So, over the past year, police and security services across the globe have accused numerous people living apparently innocuous lives with being Russian intelligence agents or operatives. The thing that I've noticed is somebody who takes, who takes note of more tendencies in propaganda, and, and what propaganda is really is training you uh, inculcating certain values into you uh, to make you more malleable is that being accused now it used to be that the evidence was necessary uh, with with uh, believe all women and uh, if you look at the language of, of media in general it's not so true in Russia in fact it isn't true in, in Russia Russia has a different format of propaganda but the Western propaganda uh, is now very emotional in its language. So being accused of something, or lots of people agreeing with one on Twitter or some other platform, uh, is presented in lieu of evidence. Okay, Just to say, uh, I have no idea, whether these people may not even exist. Okay, But what's interesting is that they're fairly low-level, kind of peon-level people, and they've been accused. Well, now anybody can be accused. And so, you know, you know, watch out, this is, going to be, this is going to be ramping up. Many others have been accused of passing information to Russia, including a security guard at, a British, at the British Embassy in Berlin, sentenced to 13 years in prison, and more than a dozen people arrested in Poland, accused, how many times have we had this word, accused of carrying out various tasks for Russian intelligence. Now, I'm of a generation where if you were accused of something, evidence had to be forthcoming. What we're doing, what the, the, the sort of the general tendency is of acclimatizing you uh, to re respond to the word accused as though it were evidence. But, and also you think, oh, well, somebody else, you don't really care. But, but one day it's going to be you. And I'll, I'll give you just an example of, of things like this. For example, the way that what they're doing to Russians and Russia uh, is going to come and bite you at some point. Let's take, for example, um, the so-called Russian oligarchs. Nothing Russian about any of these oligarchs. They do have Russian passports. They tend to collect passports. I'm thinking of uh, Abramovich, for example, in London. Now, I've, I've got no reason to like Abramovich whatsoever. However, the fact is that uh, he had a load of his stuff stolen because he kind of fell under the, the, the wheels of everything Russian is evil. Now, the Western um, populations are not going to be interested in the subtleties of his actual ethnic background. So he, he, just, he just kind of took a hit on that one. My point is this. Uh, if, they can take away, if they can take away his stuff just on the basis of being accused or of being perceived to be a member of the wrong group, incorrectly as it happens, but that doesn't matter, um, they can do it to you. That's, that's the point that I'm, I'm trying to make. Uh, in fact, more recently, there's a chap, I hope I can remember his name. No, I can't. <laughs> He's uh, working as a journalist, actually reporting in Donbass, because uh, you're not going to get this um, through the mainstream media, um, on things which have happened there. 
There are two. There's an American called Patrick Lancaster, whose name sticks in my mind for some reason. And this other chap, he's English. And he's there and he makes videos and so on. And he speaks uh, just about passable Russian. So he's got some idea of what's going on around him. Anyway, the, the British authorities accused him of various things. And they've taken away his, I think they've taken away his house and closed down his, his accounts. They basically cancelled him. Now, you, you may not care because you may be willing to stand with, you know, you may like Nazis and you want to stand with Ukraine until every single Ukrainian is dead. Okay, fine. My point isn't that you should like him or agree with anything that he's saying. What is happening, though, is that if they can come for Abramovich or Abramovich, or if they can come for this, um, you know, this young man's stuff, they come for your stuff. It's a matter of setting precedents. So being accused, you think accused, oh well, accused, that's it, guilty. There used to be this thing called due process. And I, I am willing to fight for Abramovich's right to be inviolate in his possessions. Not because I care about him, but because I care, care about me. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is they, they take extreme cases, to, and this is how uh, Marxist ideology always works, in order to justify... Uh, the rollout of, of the general principle, anyway. To continue, much about the three Bulgarians said to be among five people detained in February remains unclear. They have been charged, but their trial is not until January. They have yet to enter pleas and the British authorities have made no details public about their, alleg al al about their allegations, the allegations, so they're having their lives taken away. I don't know about you, but where are we now? August, if you can stand to have your life put on hold uh, for six months, um, the names are not forthcoming, the nature of the, of the accusations are not there. You, you, also, I mean, which country are they on? Brit they're British. Uh, da, 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 da. British authorities. So can you imagine being a Bulgarian living in, I assume, in the UK, this isn't your native language, this is not your native culture, being accused by the local authorities of being whatever. I'm not talking about whether it's true or not, I'm just saying people's lives are being taken away from them. I mean, it doesn't even have to be this long. Uh, we lived in Spain for a couple of years, and Spain is a sort of gynocentric Marxist tyranny with oranges and sunbathing. And it, Spanish women routinely, routinely accuse men of anything. And that man's life is basically closed down for two weeks. Doesn't matter. There's no evidence is necessary. Just a woman's feelings. Yeah, can you imagine? Uh, a, a Spanish woman's feelings. At the end of two weeks, he's lost his job. He's lost his life, probably, unless he has got a lot of savings and all the rest of it. You may not care about Spanish women's feelings or Spanish men's reactions or what happens to them. You may not care about Bulgarians. You may not care about Abramovich. You may not care about any of these things. And you probably don't because you're, you've been trained to be a solipsistic narcissist. But you do, you do care about yourself. And all I'm trying to say is this, that this is coming to you at some point, maybe in some kind of new format. But, but you can be accused too. Perhaps you sympathise with somebody who said something that Putin agrees with. Like me, I, Putin says that two and two are four. I also say that two and two are four. Or that you know a man is a man and a woman is a woman. There's a distinction between the two. Maybe you agree with that one, one now. Now you can be accused of being a, a Putin shill or whatever it is. That's what's being rolled out. Okay. To continue, but elsewhere, one thing is clear. Since Vladimir Putin launched his full-scale invasion of Ukraine last year, that's not actually true. If you want to uh, invade a country on a full-scale basis, you, you don't go in with 90,000 troops into a country the size of Texas, but we'll let that slide. Moscow has had to resort to riskier and less conventional methods of spying, mainly because so many of the spies it had placed under diplomatic cover in Europe had been expelled. Uh, Diplomatic cover for spying is standard operating procedure. All countries operate like this. Okay, So what they're doing is they're trying to sort of imply that this is how Russia operates, unlike all the other countries. This is precisely how all countries operate. Okay. Traditionally, three, all three of Russia's main security services, the domestic 
uh, FSB, the SVR, Foreign Inter Inter Intelligence Service and the GRU, Military Intelligence, have posted their operatives abroad under diplomatic cover. As I say, just like every other country. They have also used operatives posing as Russian business people, tourists or journalists. Just like every other country, as I mentioned. I hadn't read this before, but you kind of know what's coming. Can you not see? Sean Walker is a journalist. I don't believe he's still based in, in Russia. But clearly, you know, what do you, th what do you think he is? And I, I'm not even criticising him for it. And the Russians would expect it. it this is it's like saying... Mm, the fruit seller came to the market with fruit. Yes, that's what fruit sellers do. The war has made all that much harder. The Centre for Strategic and International Studies. I'm just going to stop there. I don't know because I haven't checked this. But I'll be very interested to know who funds it. Probably, I don't know. But they all tend to, if you kind of follow the money, they're usually funded by the American government or the CIA, which is the same sort of thing, okay. Estimated that more than 450 diplomats were expelled from Russian embassies in the first three months of the war, most of them from Europe. Yeah, that's a good idea. The country that potentially being driven to nuclear war with, let's, let's stop talking to them. Uh, again, I will say I'm not here to shill for Russia. It's, this, isn't, you know, this isn't what this channel is about. But I, I see what I see. And what I see is that uh, people like Lavrov, for example, has been conducting a actually a masterful uh, international diplomatic offensive. And uh, what you've got, you know, in Europe, for example, you've got people like um, jo uh, Joseph Barrel, uh, who comes out with some of the most idiotic comments I've ever heard. I mean, whether you like, you know, Lavrov or whatever, he's a very erudite man. Anyway. Uh, just moving on. Quote, The time after the war with all the expulsions was a fateful time for the Russian intelligence system and they have tried to replace it with different things. End quote. One European intelligence official told the Guardian in Springer, I'm assuming that this is a, an unnamed source. I'll just tell you so that you know, Russia is a high-tech environment, okay? This isn't the Russia of the 19, late 1980s, early 1990s. You can go into the, you know, the distant Zidivnia, uh, kind of like countryside, and not everywhere, but a lot of places, you've got about as much, you know, high-speed uh, internet coverage there as you've got, you know, in America. It's not that different, okay? So what I'm trying to say is, is that um, a lot of the information that the Russians want if they if they want it. I don't know if they do. Maybe they do. They can get this, you know, the same way as your governments are spying on you, just using, you know, using the electronic um, military means. Many avenues that Russia previously used for aggressive espionage operations have been shut down. When Sergei Skripal was poisoned with Navichok in 2018, yeah, <laughs> just just on this, this Navichok thing. Uh, Navichok uh, it means like a newbie in uh, in, in, in Russian. Um, I I don't know. I mean, you may doubt this, but I I've never had any dealings with Russian secret services that I've ever known about, at least. But I do know one thing about them. If they want to bump you off, they'll get you. And this whole, you know, cloak and dagger idea of this very convoluted method of doing it, it looks like a Hammer House of Horror uh, rep, you know, sort of presentation. I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing that the, the Russian services, if they want you gone, they'll just, you know, they'll just do something to your car or just run you over, hit and run. Would you go? Would you go to this ridiculous lengths of using this very specific uh, <laughs> means that can be attached only to to Russia? It's it's ludicrous. Anyway, the poison. The poisoners were GRU agents who used Russian passports issued under false identities to obtain British visas. The investigative outfit. Bellingcat traced their passport numbers to a particular passport office in Russia, allowing the identif 
ent- identification of many other GRU operatives who used passports with similar serial numbers and blowing the cover of numerous Russian agents. On top of that, since the war, it is much harder for any Russian citizens to obtain visas for travel to Britain or the Schengen zone, meaning people like the Skripal attackers would now struggle to obtain visas even if their links to the GIU were not detected. And, and, you know, just... What do you think, you know, a lot of the tourists and diplomats and businessmen coming to Russia, you know, of course a lot of them are working for for the other side too. This is just... What they're complaining about is... What they're complaining about is the fact that there's this game called football and when people play the game called football, there's a ball that gets kicked around the, the pitch and the Russians have been sent off the pitch but they're still trying to play whereas the Westerners are still on the pitch. That's the extent of the horror going on here. All of this has meant that Russia has turned to activating sleeper cells or passing on more active espionage work to unofficial agents and operatives. Now, this, I think, is interesting because what this does is it means that rather than you even having to be Russian, they're running out of people to accuse is that the accusation, remember how they used the word accusation, they're drilling that into your head in the beginning of this, um, the mere accusation of being associated in some way with Russia means that you can be taken off, off the pitch. Your life is now gone. And because of the background uh, propaganda where people are inculcated into the idea of accusation being sufficient, nobody's going to care about you at all. So it's, you know, I'm not here defending you know, Russia. Russia doesn't care about you, all right? Russia, if you, you may not believe this, but Russia actually doesn't... Russia's got horrible international propaganda. Absolutely the worst I've ever seen. It, it's, it's not fighting that war. You may be told that it is, but actually it isn't. And if it is, it should, the, their PR guy should be shot. I mean, they're just, this is the, the worst public relations uh, operation you've ever seen. And my guess it's an educated guess, is that they don't care. They're just going to deal with the war on the ground. And I think they realise that uh, whatever shortcomings West the West has, you can't fault them on their ability to lie to their own populations. And so they're not going to fight that war because there's no point. In any way, they have no interest. You know, what's the, what's the upside to them, ultimately? You know, they're not going to be able to trade with you very much. Because Russians want to do business. Uh, the entire Western society has been poisoned against Russia. So what Russia is doing, sensibly, is focusing on markets and publics that that, that they can do something about. Africa, uh, the so-called Global South, China, India, these sorts of places, Latin America. They don't care about you anymore. I know that you think, if you're an English speaker, you live in Europe or in, in, in America, that you know this is the centre of the universe, but actually, it, it you know, in terms of population size, it, it it isn't, and also now in terms of um, in terms of economy, it isn't. And what what what's changed? Whereas you know, let's say, in the sort of pre-perestroika time, or even perestroika time, uh, the idea was that uh, Russians could be turned, you know, because things were so terrible in the Soviet Union, and quite a lot of them were. And things were great in the West, and quite a lot of them were, uh, despite what you're being told, that, that a lot of that, and I'm not saying everything, but an awful lot of that is gone. Um, we don't have in Russia you know, fentanyl people dying in hundreds of thousands. Don't have it. We don't have homeless people everywhere. We don't have trash on the streets everywhere you go. We don't have you know, mass immigrants coming into the country. I mean, the, the, there, is a, there is an exchange with, with what's called the near abroad, countries like Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, places like that. But people who come here, come to work, there's no, you know, there's no um, government handouts. If you made it across the river or something, you know, now, now you can just sit here and claim benefits the rest of your life and just breed. No, there's, no, there's none of this. If anybody who comes to Russia comes to work. Okay, so it's a completely different culture. One thing I will say, I've noticed in the last six months, um, a an increase in people from Africa. I mean, obvious Africans, black Africans. But when I look at them, I realise these people. I mean, I, I 
I, I, I traveled across the southern states of America, okay? I saw you know, large amounts of American blacks, and I've lived in South London and various places. What I'm trying to say is the, the, the blacks from Africa who are here, they uh, look different. Their demeanor is different. They're well-educated, often, uh, well brought up, impeccable manners. Um, this this isn't what we're getting in the West. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I know I'm treading on thin ice here, but what I'm trying to say is the people who are coming here, generally speaking, from uh, from Africa that I've noticed tend to look pretty intellectual and like they've got something to contribute. Okay, that hasn't been the policy. Uh, I'm not saying it's never been the case, but it hasn't been the policy. Uh, of anywhere in the West that I can think of, um, so th so there's a difference. But but you certainly see that because Russia is going into business with African countries, and rather than just asset stripping them, it's actually going into business with them as as equal partners, or at least that's the presentation. All I'm trying to say is, and, and that's where they're concentrating. They're concentrating on Africa. They're concentrating on the middle on well Saudi and various other countries. They're concentrating on India. I've seen. Indian shops pop up. There's a big one in the in, in the shopping centre not so far from me, and I went in and talked to the guy there. I just said, "How long have you been here?" He he loved it here. Couldn't get enough of it. He said, "Fantastic for business." So these things are changing. So that's where the the Russians are concentrating their their if you want to call it propaganda, their diplomatic efforts. They don't care about you. You're done. I mean, if you're in Europe, you don't have the uh, um, Nord Stream. How are you going to keep, how are you going to keep warm and run businesses? No, your 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 economy, your GDP is going to be going down, 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 and so that's the reason why they have to really concentrate you know, internally all this propaganda on you, because you need to have a version that you can tell yourself as your standard of living is being slashed. If you know my border work, you'll know that my argument has been that this was this is the main goal of this war in Ukraine. If they can hurt Russia, that's all to the good. But that's not the main thing. The main thing, the main purpose of this war is to level out the um, the collective West and what you might call the, the, the BRICS countries, the, the fair world order. Because in my view, they're creating a new system. What you're observing is the creation of the actual new world order. But it's been made, if you're pro-Russia, pro-Global South or whatever, everyone's now you know, like a rah-rah team on this. This is uh, real politic um, alchemy, in my view. Okay, So to say I'm the, this pro-Russia person, it's, that's not how I see it. Uh, I'm, certainly Russia is on the right side of history as regards what's going on in Ukraine. But... You know, it's, it's this is a much more subtle thing in my view, and they're using mediocre people, these these really mediocre people, uh, like Van der Leyen, like uh, like Rishi Sunak, um, and Joe Biden, as to front this. Anyway, they're creating a new uh, plebeian uh, master caste. Anyway, that's how it seems to me. All of this has meant that Russia has turned to activating sleeper cells or passing on more active espionage work to unofficial agents and operatives. Yeah, people who <laughs> wouldn't know absolutely, who would know it apparently absolutely nothing of import, just like you. you see, so if you if you stick your head above the parapet, uh, you can too can be accused of this on the basis of this rationale, and nobody will care. Nobody will care about you. They already don't. These may be third country nationals or they may be quote unquote illegals, Russian operatives posing as third country nationals who spend years painstakingly building up their cover. Yeah, like running a yarn shop in Athens. You can imagine a high powered um, movers and shakers go in there every day, can't you? Illegals, a holdover from a Soviet-era program, traditionally do little active espionage work, allowing them to blend into society for longer-term missions. Yeah, perhaps like they're going to sell them a few yards of, uh, of um, lace. 
However, in the past year, at least seven alleged illegals, they don't even know if they're actually illegals, they're alleged illegals, and I bet they're going to be accused of something as well, have been unmasked in the West. Unmasked, that's a good one. In Norway, Brazil, the Netherlands, Slovenia and Greece. Is Brazil the West? Hmm. Some managed to escape and are presumed to be back in Russia. Others are still under arrest in the West. Presumed. So they, they were alleged and now they're presumed. This is reporting, but it doesn't matter. This isn't, if you've noticed, there are no actual facts here whatsoever. This is surmise and uh, um, accusation. Uh, but what it does is, because you haven't got any actual media and you haven't had it, Say no, nothing left. I mean, the last the last little bits were kind of crushed. Certainly in the UK, I think about ten to 15, twelve years ago. I mean, there wasn't much before then. <clears throat> about this, this is just propaganda. That's all it is. The three suspected spies in Britain were ar arrested in February, two months after Maria Meyer and Ludwig Gisch were uh, arrested in Ljubljana, Slovenia. Authorities there believe the pair are Russians who are posing as Argentinians were in fact career SVR officers. <sighs> Maybe, but probably not. And even if these people exist and some of these things are true, it does nothing to mitigate my broader point, which is that any of these accusations can be brought against absolutely anybody and their lives are gone on the basis of no evidence. Evidence doesn't matter. And when evidence doesn't matter, what you're living under is a tyranny. Mayer, in inverted commas, ran an art gallery in Ljubljana and used her cover job for frequent travel, including to Britain. Maybe she just went there on business. Maybe she just went on holiday. It is not known whether she carried out espionage tasks in, in Britain. If you go through this with, with your brain not in neutral, you will notice that there are absolutely no facts here. Okay? Zero. It is not known whether she carried out espionage tasks in Britain, and there is no public evidence linking her or other Russian operatives to the three Bulgarians charged. Well, as far as I know, there's no actual public evidence linking her as a Russian operative, but we just assumed that little conclusion, but who cares anymore? You're too stupid to follow any of this. That's what they assume. This isn't um, this isn't agitprop. This is basically uh, here to acclimatise you to a general atmosphere, getting you used to the, to the notion of accusation being tantamount to basically proof in the, the days where proof was still required. And, you know, they're getting you ready for for this. As I say, uh, this this propaganda is n not aimed at Russia because we don't care. Um, the Russians that I know, the people that I know, are bemused mainly about what's happened to the West. Uh, slightly, um, they can't believe that you'd do this to your countries because they were brought up with real propaganda. Uh, the propaganda of people like... Um, I don't know, uh, Goldsworthy or uh, whoever it was. Uh, when he first came to Russia, everybody, Russians, read all of this Western literature. I realised, um, you know, um, Dickens and uh, how potent, how powerful uh, literature is in, in that way. And uh, so everybody, you know, somehow believed that the West was superior. And we've had this for a long time. And uh, the, the, the Russians of, I think now, just about beginning to understand that you're insane, that there is no fixing you. And they didn't want to believe it. It's not like they all, you know, Russians were really primed to hate the West. Quite the reverse. Quite the reverse. They can't believe that you would be as dumb as you apparently are and as perverted and disgusting because they now know about you know, all the paedophilia stuff. I used to try to tell them some years ago, before this uh, war. And I could see them when I'd, I'd start explaining it to them, you know, about how in the nursery that my daughter went to when we lived in the UK for three years, there was a book called Me and My Two Daddies about the wonders of 
uh, a second father, you know, taking this child on his knee and caressing him in various un- inappropriate ways. And if you look at that book askance, you can, you know, they, 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 you can expect a visit from the, from the social services. I could see them, I mean, they'd listen for a while, and then I see their eyes kind of glaze over. They think you're making it up. They think it's not true. They think this can't be real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, it definitely is real. And now I think, I don't think they're there yet, uh, but I think a lot of them are beginning to get it. And also just you may be interested that when this happened, I um, mean, February of last year, there was this you know, exodus of from Russia of uh, a lot of young men, particularly none of whom actually were, most of whom would have been called up because they didn't have any military experience. They tended to be, tended to be uh, westernised, um, libtardized, if you want to call it that. And the rest of Russia said, good, don't come back. And uh, the, the, the general feeling about these kinds of people is, uh, I suppose some people despise them, but a lot of people just feel basically sorry for them. Because these people, they're lost now. This is a loss. Uh, those people who left then, they, uh, they have no home now. And uh, they, they don't belong here, and they definitely don't belong in the West, because they thought that the West would receive them with open arms. As, you know, but they've, you know, they've really misjudged the West. Anyway, perhaps I'll make a video one day about, you know, about all of that. But what I'm trying to say is, is that the, the, the idea that Russians are sort of straining at the bit, chomping at the bit to hate the West, this isn't the case in my experience, but they are they are bemused, and I think now concerned, and now beginning, I think, to kind of realise, you know what, um, we're, we're all right here. You know, we, we don't want what, what's happened to France. We don't want what's happened to, to, to Paris. Um, although I would argue that some of those things in different ways are happening anyway, and that those are features of what I call technique, and ultimately, in my view, I'm sure I'm going to get shouted down as a Putin shill and all the rest of it. In my view, there is a single um, trajectory that all countries which submit to technique are on. And ultimately, this war and the one to follow it, I guess, in China, with China, are simply processes of, of um, fusing all of these apparent uh, discrete tax bases into one larger thing. That's what I think is happening. Um, anyway, that's my view of it. Could be wrong. Details of where I upload to, how you can join my Substack and Telegram channel, support my work, yay, and download my books free, which I do recommend, by the way, are in the description. Thanks for listening, and bye for now.